Help uh, is a project uh, that was uh, created uh, because uh, the Spastic Society, or ADAPT as it is now known, had spent about 37 years responding to the needs of children who came to the school. So, like all NGOs in this country, we have been working with parents and children who have been coming to us. And so, what we have not done is gone out and looked at what's happening outside the school and outside people who are coming to us. So, the only way to do that is to really go and look at areas in, in the country and map where the children are and find out what their needs are. So, this is something that is quite easily done in the West because there are resources to do it and everyone is identified. In poorer countries, not much of this has been done. There are random sample surveys that are conducted in India also, but never a big district or a full area. So we conceptualized the idea of doing this for the first time, and so we picked up two jurisdictions. One was the A-Ward in Kolaba, and the other was the Thana district, Pelar uh, district in Thana, 22 villages which constituted a block. And the reason why we chose these two jurisdictions was Kolaba A ward is the richest ward in the country. If inclusive education is to work anywhere, it has to work here. If it does not work in the richest part of the country, it's not going to work anywhere else. The other dimension was to take a poor and a poorer area where there's not very much happening and see how inclusion can be done. So it is a contrast also in terms of locations. For us, just the counting is quite a complicated process, difficult to find people with disabilities. So we wanted a process by which not only was counting done, but also how the methods of counting is to be done. And so the method of counting is a very important part of the project. And uh, Dan here and I have worked together in other countries in Southeast Asia. And so I thought Dan would be the most appropriate person to really be able to tell us whether we are doing it in the right way and whether this is a method that can be used across the country. So I'm going to ask Dan to talk a little bit about, we've been doing this now for about 15 months. And so, and we have completed rounds of counting. And Dan can talk a little bit more about uh, some of the methods and what the numbers look like. Yes, as, as uh, uh, Mitu and, and Sati uh, just reminded us, uh, the prevalence of disability in the world is very, very high. According to the World Report on Disability, about 15% of, of people in the, in the world have a disability. Um, but until recently, um, data and numbers on, on the prevalence of disability, especially among children, has been very hard to come by because uh, statistics that have been collected in the past have been done with a very, very poor methodology. As a matter of fact, if you look at the census in India, it only reports about a two, roughly a 2% rate of disability, which is what a lot of old censuses in many countries used to report before they started updating the methodology of how we uh, identify people with disabilities. And so those surveys and those censuses are improving, and they give us an idea of, of, of what the scope of the issue is, and how, how many people are, are affected by disability. But one of the issues in a country like India is not just in coming up with an estimate of how many people have a disability, but actually locating the specific people who have a disability. Because in a developed country, um, we can uh, advertise services. We can try to raise awareness about them. And people have the, uh, the, the means, the transportation, the money, the, the awareness to be able to come and access those services. But when we're talking about sort of poor areas within a country like India, in the slums of Mumbai or in, in a poor rural village, uh, that's not good enough. We can't, uh, we can't just sort of build the services and they will come. We actually have to go out and, 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 and locate the people, and we have to find out specifically what are the barriers that are preventing them from ac accessing those services. So we can make changes in the system that, that, that allow us to connect to these people who, who deserve to be fully included in society and, 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 and bring them in. And so what the, uh, the project uh, that, that ADAPT uh, put together, I say it, I'm gonna butcher the pronunciation, Shiksha <laughs> um, wanted to do was to, uh, as an example, take an urban and a rural area and go out there and actually try to go door to door and reach every, every household 
and identify people who have who have disabilities, and then link them up, uh, then link them up to services. Figure out what they need and what the barriers to providing the services are, and, and see how they, they can build a system to do it. This is an extremely ambitious uh, project, and, an extre and a very difficult one. It, ha it has a lot of logistical challenges. And so and we're just going th starting to go through the data now, and, and we're finding some problems with the data, but we're learning a lot as well. Uh, about about how uh, maybe uh, 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 this 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 can be done, and we hope through the through the process of doing this that we'll get in some data that will be very useful for us. We'll identify some people who we can start providing services to, and we can try to figure out how these methods can best be adapted to the situation in, in India to be done in, in a sustainable, uh, uh, useful way. Uh, and we're already finding in some of our preliminary results some interesting uh, but not surprising results that um, children with disabilities are much less likely to attend school, especially uh, girl children uh, with disabilities. That having a disability has a much bigger impact on school attendance than social class or being in a scheduled tribe or scheduled caste. And that is, that's a very common result uh, with other countries as well, where uh, there was a... Um, a uh, 13 country study done by the World Bank which found that having a disability is a better predictor of whether a child goes to school than any other characteristic gender income social class it's a real it's a real barrier and i think it I, so already the data is starting to identify some things which show the, the, the need for for a program like this thank you dan um, i just thought it might be quite nice for uh, some of our others who are on the field to say a few words. Varsha, would you like to begin and say a little bit about the kind of people who've been coming in from the A ward? I know we haven't finished, and so we cannot share the findings. Just very quickly to take it through the process. Firstly, the mapping was done, which is like a household census survey. And we had enumerators from outside. We did not do this, but we did train on the questions to be asked pertaining to disability, which were a combination of two. One was what the government does in the census. You know, do you have anyone who's blind or who's deaf or who has a problem with walking? Those questions. But like Dan pointed out, um, that is only getting us a 2%. And the other advanced countries have now upped that. And now they're looking at functional difficulties. That does this person have a problem? with understanding or have a problem in speaking, which if we go, especially in the rural areas and say, Koi andha hai kya? Nahi so those were the functional questions that uh, were put into this mapping exercise as well. And we got certain numbers from that. But it was essential for us to now validate that and find out whether those were true and whether we had still missed out on children. So therefore, another process of assessing or screening was started, and we've done that in Pelha and in AWAR, where those that have been identified under this mapping process are called for a detailed examination. So we have a lot of partners with us. In the rural areas, we've tied up with the National Rural Health Mission also because it's a health survey as well. If you are ill, if you have physical uh, health problems, you are more likely not to go to school again. So health was one component. Then we have partners from uh, the vision, uh, visual impairment area, from hearing impairment, from uh, learning disabilities, from autism, ADHD, across the board. And plus, we've had 40 years of experience with multiple disabilities. So this entire team sits and assesses every person who comes into the camp. One interesting thing that has happened in both areas is that apart from the people who have been identified by the mapping exercise, We've also had what we've termed as walk-ins. People who have not been identified by the mapping exercise, who have been missed by the mapping exercise, but because of word of mouth, they are coming in to be assessed. Because we've done very aggressive marketing of the screening camp. We have people who are from the community called community workers who go out and tell the people that this is what is happening. We have a megaphone of bhopu, you know, really, that you do in the, in the rural areas and in the slums, and they go out with that. And they announce that Saturday ko 10 to 5, we're having this, doctor rahenge, ye rahenge, please come. On the day, again, they go out and physically round up the people who need to be assessed, because as uh, 
uh, our experience has been that if you don't provide the transport, people won't come. So the, the screening exercise is almost over. We have just one left now. And then we'll have a better idea of the numbers. But that's what we've been doing so far. Thanks, Vasha. Uh, Manita, would you like to add anything? Would you like to say? really need the services and we really need to connect these children. In Pehar and in AWOD, we have lots of children who need services, who need to be connected to the schools and we need to teach the, train the teachers in these schools to be inclusive. Uh, the principals and the teachers are looking for our support in having teacher training programs and we are going to start them in AWOD. We have done a few teacher training programs in Pehlar and now with our community workers we are trying to include these children with disabilities into the services existing in Pehlar. Thank you.